My name is Richard Muller. I am a professor of physics who, in his retirement, created the Berkeley Earth Program uh, to study climate change, along with my daughter, Elizabeth Muller. I didn't know whether global warming was real, whether it was completely bogus, or maybe it was twice as bad as people said. So my daughter and I, who at that time had a consulting firm, decided we would set up a nonprofit organization to study climate change ourselves. We brought in some really good people, uh, extraordinarily good people. I mean, at the level that Saul Perlmutter was a member of our team and a co-author of our papers when it was announced that he had won the Nobel Prize in Physics. So we had really good, Art Rosenfeld, who was a hero in energy conservation. But these were all people who shared the same doubts that I had. So we wound up doing an enormous effort, completely rebuilding a program to use historic temperature records, and did it in what we believe to be the best statistical approach to doing this. We managed to put together a record we studied the systematics. I had no hope that we'd be able to address all the systematics. In the end, we could, and that came as a wonderful surprise to me. Uh, each one required a great deal of effort, uh, poor station quality, the urban heat island effect, the data adjustment that's, uh, that, that, that's been done, and most important of all, the data selection bias, the fact that every other team was using less than 20% of the data, in some cases only only about 7% of the data. So how do they pick their data? And, and, and did that lead to a bias, even an inadvertent bias? So we managed to address all of these. And in the end, we got a nice curve, a curve that showed the temperature. And it was rising. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> we'd never expected to address the question of what caused it. Uh, I tried fitting it to an exponential. It actually wasn't a very good fit. Tried a Parabola, no, that wasn't a good fit either. Okay, try the U.S. population, no, that wasn't so good. Hey, dummy, try carbon dioxide, smack on. Yeah, it was, if I remember correctly, you did got a correct fit when you also included carbon dioxide and, if I remember correctly, volcanoes? Well, there were dips. And what we did to do the volcanoes is we did a one-parameter fit. That is, we included the dust record, sulfate record actually, from the Arctic and Antarctic, the average sulfate record, and that, that, that's a series of dips. And then we added that in and adjusted one parameter to get a very good fit. We also added in solar variability. We tried this in many different ways. Tried just the straight sunspot record, running averages of the sunspot record, the IPCC uh, function of solar intensity. We tried all of them. They didn't contribute. Now, we could rule this out in part, large part, because our record went back 260 years, whereas the IPCC record only went back about, a, really, into the late 1800s. So we, we went back all the way to 1753, and we could do that by using our statistical methods. The uncertainties get large when you get back there, but it's still usable data, in particular because of the volcanoes, which are big excursions, volcanoes causing large negative temperature excursions. So I was flabbergasted. Not only was global warming real and roughly consistent with what the previous groups had said, but the match to carbon dioxide and the, the, the fact that that solar variability was not responsible. We enable us to rule out the primary alternative theory. Another alternative theory is that the absence of volcanic eruptions in the recent period is why it's warmer. But we could see these individual volcanic eruptions because we went back further in time. And we could see that their effects were temporary. So we could rule out the other one. In fact, we can rule out every scientific theory other than the greenhouse gas theory. Now, there are some people who say, oh, I believe it's something else. It's changes in the Earth's orbit. I wrote a book on the changes of the Earth's orbit, a technical book meant for graduate level study on the so-called Milankovitch cycles. It doesn't match those. Some people say, well, there's something else going on. And I say, what's the prediction you make? Oh, I don't know, it's random. Now, that's not what we call a scientific theory. If you say, well, it's something else and I don't know what it is, my answer is something else that just happens by accident 
that perfectly match the carbon dioxide increase. Uh, are you serious? Now, when you announced uh, BEST, what you now call Berkeley Earth, those contrarians you just mentioned uh, praised you for your effort and uh, were uh, championing you as a bit of a hero for doing the work. Uh, how did they react to the results that you found when, some, when you pointed out that basically a lot of the points they had against temperature records that we have didn't pan out? The, the reaction has been mixed on both sides. Mm -hmm. There are some of the skeptics who are really deniers and they don't accept our work. They try to nitpick at it, but we're very good at answering them. So we try to answer on the blogs all the questions that are raised. I think we do a, a very good job. We can't win over everybody. We can just win over those who are open-minded. I believe I can convince any skeptic who has an open mind that it is real and caused by humans. You're recording? Do I sound good on the yeah, camera? Yeah, of course you do. Ah. <coughs> of, course. of course I do. <laughs>